Masechet Rosh Hashanah Daf Zayin. We have three main sections. One is just finishing off when we were talking about the one year uh, cutoff date regarding a Bechor. We'll define that better. And next we're going to see a Baraita regarding all of the events of Nisan. It's going to list four of them. And um, some of these are not actually in our Mishnah. Actually, all of them are not in our Mishnah. So we're going to discuss each one and also uh, ask why they're not listed in our Mishnah for, for Nisan. And then we're going to delve into the next item in our original Mishnah, which is about animal tithes. And we see there's a machloket about that. And uh, based on that machloket, we're going to wonder, how come you say four heads of the year when actually, if you look, there's um, different amounts and maybe not four. We're going to see four different answers to how we get the number four. Okay, so we'll see all this in turn. And we begin up at the beginning. Uh, if you remember last, uh, we, we ended off saying that um, there are two ways to calculate Baal Ta'achir. One is based on the various uh, holidays. And the other is also one year. And it could be that a year will pass before uh, three holidays do in some cases. Uh, this law about a year is recorded regarding a Bechor, uh, where it says, Kol asher yivaled, And then the next Pasuk says, Hashem shana b'shana. So that's where we learn a special law that regarding Bechor, one has to um, take care of that donation and sacrifice. If it's Tahor, you have to sacrifice it within a year. And we learn from there that other Korbanot also have to be taken care of within one year. So now our question is how to calculate. Abaye says simply from the day it's born, right? One year. Okay, that makes sense. Ravacha says no from its eighth day because it cannot be sacrificed. Uh, all, all animals may not be sacrificed before their eighth day. They have to go through a, a cycle of uh, berit. So uh, therefore, since it could not start, you cannot, you cannot offer it until the eighth day. So that the one year um, count starts on the eighth day and will end one year later, uh, which makes sense. So, uh, so we have a simta of machloket here, but then Gemara says, Vila peligi. actually, they're not arguing. They're talking about two different cases. Ha betam, ha amum. If it's a tam, if it's an unblemished animal that can be sacrificed, then you'll go count from the eighth day because that's when it needs to be sacrificed. The first, that's the first chance you can. Whereas Abaye, if, since, if it has a blemish, then it's not sacrificed. So Abaye is talking about a blemished animal that the, the Kohen will slaughter on his own and eat. So since it's not a sacrifice, it, you do not, um, you would not have to wait till the eighth day. Oh, we question that. Hold on. Even something that's a Baal Mum, can you eat it right away? Generally, um, if an animal is not, is not viable, it's not going to live, then you cannot, you cannot uh, um, just slaughter it and eat it. You have to wait to see if it's viable. And that takes eight days. So you're going to have to wait eight days anyway in both cases. So we answered the Kim Le'ebe She'kalu Lo Chadashav. Though we watched this and we saw that it uh, completed it's a, a complete pregnancy and therefore we know it's viable. I mean, other, in other cases, we might not be so careful to check uh, if it's completed pregnancy. And so that could be uh, a preemie and then therefore it may not be viable. But since this one uh, did come to completion, it's viable. And that's why we don't even have to wait the eight days if it has a blemish to eat it. Okay, and that concludes uh, section A. And now we're gonna see a Braita that lists four other Nissan events um, that Nissan is the first of the month for months, also for calculating a leap year, also for donating a half shekel, and also for a house rental, if you just say, um, rent, I'll rent it to you for this, this year. So here's the Braita, Tenura Banan. Okay, let's analyze each one by one. How do we know that Nisan is in fact the first month of the year? In the Torah, never mentions names of months because the names of months come from, from the Babylonians. We, we, we borrow them when we went into the egg, Babylonian exile. So the Torah just says the first, second month. And so it doesn't correlate them with the, with the names of the month. So how do we know that when the Torah says the first of the month, the, the, this month is the first of the month, 
How do we know that that is Nisan? Um, so it's going to be surprisingly difficult to figure, figure this out from the Torah alone. Okay, the, the Torah, the, you know, the first commandment in Shemot 12 says, this month will be the first of the month, this. Now, back then, Moshe knew what he was talking about because he was saying this, but how do we know what, what month that is? Okay, it's quoting the whole context here in Shemot uh, Yudbet to tell, to, to, so that we know this is when they took the Seh for Pesach. So we know for sure that the first month is when Pesach is. We still don't know what month that is and what name it is. Um, is it Nisan? Is it before, after? Who knows? But now we connect it with another Pasuk in Devarim, Shamoret Chodesh Aviv. So we know that Pesach is also called, uh, we also we have to celebrate Pesach in Chodesh Aviv, the month of Aviv. Aviv. Aviv means spring, but it also means the ripening, the month of ripening. You see, it, came, it comes in handy in first grade when we learned all the, all the different names of the holidays. Okay, this is a good thing we, we remember that. So now, what is, when is the ripening of the grain? So go look, you'll see that the ripening happens, the majority of the ripening happens in Nisan. So that's Chodesh Ha'aviv, that's the month of ripening, and that is Pesach. Therefore, we can go back and see that Pesach is called the first month. So now we know the first month is Nisan uh, through the connection of these two Pesukim. Okay, um, that sounds good. But not so, not yet. Hold on, maybe Iyar, um, because maybe there's some things ripening there. No, by Aviv, Eleka. No, by Iyar, everything's finished ripening. There's nothing happening in Iyar. Forget that. Vema Adar, by Narov Aviv, Eleka. In Adar, it's something star ripening. So maybe you'll say Adar is the first month. And so that would mean that you celebrate Pesach in Adar and you celebrate Purim the month before that in Shabbat. No, we need the majority of the of the ripening. It's true, Adar has a little bit of ripening, but uh, not quite so much. And so, there, so therefore, it has to be Nisan. But we reject that. Midi, Rov Aviv Ketiv, doesn't say Shamoret Chodesh Rov Aviv, the month of most of the ripening. It should be when the beginning of the ripening. So really, it's ambiguous. We can't tell. It really could be Adar based on proof number one. And so we look for another proof so Rav Chista says, let's learn it from Sukkot. We know that the seventh month is the month of the, the holiday of the harvest. So let's see. I mean, and if we establish when that is, then we can count backwards. During what month do we harvest? In reality, go out and you'll see in Israel, people do are the harvest in the Tishrei, and it's called the seventh, and therefore, then we go backwards and we know that Nisan is the first. All right, so maybe that will work. Hold on, maybe maybe in Marcheshvan uh, also, we're making a harvest. And in that case, you'd count back to Iyad would be the first month. No, by Nasif Eleka, by Mar Cheshvan, there's no more, not, nothing harvesting. The harvest is finished. Well, maybe, you know, the harvest starts in Elul, actually. Already some things are finished, are, are finished drying out in, in the all summer, and we could, we could bring them in. So, and then in that case, Shivi'i would be Adar. Adar would be the first month. No, by Narov Asif Eleka. We need what the majority, the majority of the gathering uh, uh, happens in uh, in Tishrei. So, so we're not going to, we're going to exclude Adar. Hold on, Midi, Rav Asif Ketiv, the Pasuk doesn't say when, on, during the month when you do most of your gathering. It doesn't say that. It says any gathering. So this source is also not clear. And we need another source that Nisan is the first. And so therefore, there is no way to find a definitive proof from the Torah only because the Torah never refers to the Babylonian months. So rather, we have to look to Nevi'im. Um, and now we're going to list a whole, a lot of different possibilities. And the truth is, is there's so many. Uh, so in Zechariah, it names the 24th 
day of the 11th month and says the 11th month is Shabbat. Okay, we know the order of the uh, of the months. I mean, everybody knows that. That's it's widespread. The Babylonians are Babylonian uh, things. You can ask one of them if you don't know. And so, since the eleventh month is Shabbat, so then we know the first is Nisan. That's proof number one, and it's perfectly fine. But then we go on and add, add, add more. Um, after they did the uh, beauty pageant. And Esther was chosen. She was taken. No, this is before the beauty pageant, right? She was taken um, in the tenth month, which is Tevet. So then we know the first is Nisan. He goes back to Zechariah, and he says there the four, the ninth month is Kislev. So there you go. Then the first is going to be Tishrei. He goes back to Esther. We keep going back and forth. Zichania and Esther. Ve'yikreu sofra melech betei b'chodesh ha'shilishi hu chodesh sivan. At the end of the Megillah, they call the scribes in the b'chodesh uh, chodesh sivan. The third month, and the third month is sivan. Then the first month is, is Tishrei. All right, good. These are all fine proofs. We continue with one more pasuk from Esther. When Haman makes the lottery, the, the lottery, it falls out on the 12th month, and the 12th month is called Adar. Therefore, the first is going to be Nisan. And lastly, Nisan. And that same pasuk, um, it said, the beginning of the pasuk is, that says that Haman made the lottery during the first month, which is Nisan. The lottery came out that he's going to end up destroying the Jews in the 12th month. But at the, 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 the scene is set in the first month, which is Nisan. And actually, this seems to be the clearest pasuk because you don't have to even do any calculation. It says the first, the first month is Nisan. So then we wonder, why doesn't everybody just agree with this last one? This seems to be the clearest. No, Dilma might Rishon, Rishon de Milte. Maybe it says a Chodesh Rishon. It doesn't mean the first month of the year in a calendar year. Maybe it means the first month of the story, the first month of Haman's meddling and causing trouble. Um, and so, since that is ambiguous, they prefer some, some of these other. Uh, possibilities. Okay, I feel like there's something deeper here that we may be missing, something about the uh, going back and forth from Zechariah to Esther, and also from the end of Esther, which is a happy news, to the beginning of Esther, which is uh, tragic news, and Zechariah also talking about the, uh, the, the, the rebuilding of the Bet HaMikdash and at, at his time. Uh, so I feel like there's something here about beginnings and endings and uh, hope and tragedy and uh, um, something to do with that and the names of the Babylonian months. Okay, but anyway, all of these Pesukim are perfectly fine, and so there's no doubt about it. Nisan is the first of the months. Okay, so now we establish that. We go back to our Mishnah, and we ask, Our Mishnah, How come it doesn't list Chodashim? And the answer is, it's dealing with years and things that happen in a yearly cycle, uh, like, um, like uh, you know, Bechor and Maaser and things like that. But things that have to do with months, it's not interested in talking about that. So it agree, everyone agrees, but it just didn't mention it because it's talking about yearly cycle items. All right, good. Now, so now we get to the next thing in this Baraita that we mentioned. It says Nisan is the first for leap years, for calculating when the leap year will be. Hold on, is that true? We have a Baraita that says you should not, the Betin should not make a calculation of if it is, the leap year means, do we add another Adar? Why would we add, add another, a second Adar? Because we want to make sure that Pesach is going to be in the spring. So if we look around and we see that the, the grain is not ripe yet, and, and then, then the sun is coming up soon, we're going to say, okay, you know what? Add another second Adar and delay it. So they're going to base it on uh, the weather, They're looking around, seeing if it's ripe, or they see the weather and they can predict even from sometime before, or they may do it based on calculations of uh, astronomical data uh, like we do today. So based on all these things, when do they decide? 
they do not decide before Rosh Hashanah. And if they did, it's no good. So if a Betin gets together in the middle of the summer and says later this year, it's going to be uh, um, a, a second Adar, no good. The reason is because, first of all, it's way too early. If they announce it then, everyone's going to forget. And second of all, they don't have enough data. You need to get closer in time so you can see the weather patterns and know whether spring is going to come uh, earlier or later. And so therefore, you cannot do it in Nisan. It has to be after Rosh Hashanah. Um, and uh, the truth is, the later the better. Um, if you're pressured, then you can do it the day after Rosh Hashanah. That's the absolute earliest. What kind of pressure? Um, if you're afraid, maybe there's persecution and you're not sure if you're going to get the Betin together, some people are traveling or whatever, then you can do it um, right after Rosh Hashanah. But no earlier. And in all cases, we never add a month other than Adar. We're not going to add two Nisans, we're not going to add two Tishrez, only Adar. So this is our question. Why does this Baraita say that Nisan is the, is the month when we decide leap years, when actually it's never Nisan, it's Tishre or later. Answer, what, what he meant is that we can know what's the ending date, what's the latest ta- day that the Betin can decide we're going to add a second Adar, and the answer is Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Um, through Adar, if they see, okay, this is Adar now, but uh, spring hasn't come, they could still decide we're going to add another Adar. But once they declare Rosh Chodesh Nisan, and a few days later they say, oh, you know what, it's still cold out, they can't go back. That's it. This is the, the, that's the closing date. All right. There's actually two opinions about this. The first opinion said you can declare the new, the, the leap month anytime in Adar. The second opinion says, no, only until Purim. After Purim, and if you didn't declare it yet, then there's going to be just one Adar. That's all. Now, my time, I demand them at Purim. As a side point, what is the reason? Why would you say only until Purim? Since we know we have a custom, we start talking about the laws of Pesach 30 days before Pesach, which is Purim. So then the day after Purim, people are already starting to learn about the laws of Pesach. They're already starting to prepare and they're cleaning their houses. Then a month later, they're going to assume that that is Pesach and they're going to refrain from eating chametz. Now, if you if during those 30 days, you give a new uh, 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 announcement that says, oh, no, that's this is not Pesach. It's 30 days after that. Well, then they're already in Pesach mode. And then by time 30 days after that comes, they're going to say, no, we, we had Pesach. They can get all confused and they're going to end up not being careful regarding chametz during the real Nisan, which is now a month later. So you can't confuse people uh, uh, so much. Um, rather, if it's before Purim, then they'll know. You announced it before Purim, they're not even going to start preparing. Then you add a month and they'll prepare at the right time. Okay, the Idach, now the first Tanah that says you can announce it anytime in Adar, it's okay, people won't get confused. Everyone knows that the leap month is dependent on complex calculations. And they'll say, oh, the rabbis didn't uh, finish their, their calculations until after Purim. And they'll know, okay, we, I know we started learning a couple of halachot. They'll put away the books and they'll wait till the, the, the next month. And then they'll start all over again. So it's not that confusing. However, once you declare Rosh Chodesh Nisan, then for sure, everyone thinks that Pesach is coming up. So everyone would agree that you cannot announce the leap, uh, the leap month after Nisan was already declared. Good. So now, since everyone agrees to that, how come our Mishnah, the beginning of Rosh Hashanah, does not include Ibur in uh, Ibur Hashanah in its list? Oh, we only list beginnings, not endings. And since this is, this is a conclusion date, that's why our Mishnah doesn't include it, even though actually everyone would agree with this basic law. All right, and now we get to the next item, right? The third one on the list was a, it's about half, she, half a shekel, the, that uh, the beginning of Nisan is the fiscal year for people donating the half shekel. Uh, how do we know? What's the source? 
um, that it says this in because it says this in the Braita. Amar Rabbi Yoshia, Amar Kera Zot Olat Chodesh Bechodesh Bechodesh Lechodesh Hashana. So this is um, uh, this is the Olah that you should bring every month on Rosh Chodesh um, for the months of the year. So you see the key word here is Chodesh, says it three times. We're going to read at least one of them, not to mean month, but as Chadash, a new, something new. So Amra Torah, Chadesh ve'ave korban metruma Chadasha, that you should, at certain, and for, uh, for one month, at a certain time of the year, you should bring the communal offerings from the new donation. So Machasita uh, Shekel is everyone contributes for all communal offerings like Korban Tamid and Korban Musaf. Everyone is included. Everyone is chips in and is a part of it. And so this Pasuk is saying, don't use the same old money from last year, two years ago. Uh, you should renew and have current donations. Now, the question is when? When is, it gonna, when is that going to be? The Tiruma Hadasha, the Gamre Shana, Shana, Minisan, Dictib, the Shon Hulachem, the Hoche, Hashana. We're making a Gezera Shava. You see this Pasuk in, in, in uh, Bemidbar says Hoche Hashana, and the one in Shemot says this month is going to be the first Le Hoche Hashana. So it has the same phrase. So therefore, we know that in, in Pinechas, where it says bring a new, bring a new uh, um, uh, Korban. And the beginning of this new month, which is the, the new first month, it is the first one. And the first one is Nisan. And that's how we know that we begin the Machasita Shekel. That's why even today, when we do the Zechel, the Machasita Shekel, we do it in Adar. So to make sure that we are giving it before the cutoff date, before the Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Okay, good. So now, Shana Shana Hashana. Hold on, if you're going to make a Gezer shava, I could find the word Shana somewhere else. And this, in regarding Tishrei, says, Mereshit HaShana, Adacharit Shana. That's talking about Tishrei. So maybe you'll say that Machasit HaShekel fiscal year is Tishrei. No, Danin Shana Sheyesh Ima Chodashim, Mishana Sheyesh Ima Chodashim, Ve'en Danin Shana Sheyesh Ima Chodashim, Mishana She'en Ima Chodashim. This Pasuk that you told me in Devarim about Tishrei just says the word HaShana. And that's not as good as the one from Shemot that has Lechodshe Hashana. And this all phrase also has Lechodshe Hashana. So therefore, we're going to prefer to make a Gezera where to a, a, not a common word, Hashana, that appears all over the place, but rather a two-word combination appears here and here. That's a much stronger hyperlink. And so that's how we know that. Good. Amar Rav Yudama Shemuel, Korbenot Sibur. A few more laws now about this machasita shekel, um, communal offerings. Once Rosh Chodesh Nisan comes, it's a misvah. You should bring from the new money. The old money, they'll use for other things. But all communal offerings from then on should be from the new machasita shekel collection. If for whatever reason you did use the old money, right? maybe the new money delivery didn't come in yet or you made a mistake, it's okay. It's still a valid korban. You missed out on the on an opportunity for mitzvah, but it's still a valid korban. Good. Tanya na mehachi. So this was said by Shemuel the Amora, and sure enough, we find a baraita that backs it up. Korbanot zibur harbain bechad minisan leavi min hachadash mitzvah leavi min hachadash. You should bring it from the new. Um, that's the same words. Vimavi min hayashan yasa. If you bought it from the old one, it's fine. Ela shechiser mitzvah but you missed on the opportunity. And this Baraita now adds yet another law. If an individual wanted to give money on his own, I have my own money. Besides the Machasita Shekel, I want to donate something that will be used for a communal purpose, like for a communal offering or to buy a vessel. Is that allowed? And yes, it is allowed as long as you fully transfer it over to the community. So the point is that an individual is not allowed to buy a, an animal to use per, for Korban Tamid because it's not yours, one person. It has to be the communal funds. If you totally donate that money to the communal funds, then that can be used for, to, for buying this the Korban Sibur. Okay, maybe people wanted to have like, you know, a special uh, zikhut and say, oh, here's this money and I hope you'll use this for today's korban sibur. That's okay. Now, peshita, isn't that obvious? You might have thought maybe he'll, 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 uh, 
he's not going to fully transfer it over to the public. He's going to say, oh, that's really my money. Um, uh, so we might say, say maybe it's not allowed. It has to only go through Machasit Shekel, whereas it gets all mixed up with everybody's. And so therefore it teaches, the Sparaita teaches that it's okay. The person will, in fact, transfer it to the public and um, we'll make sure he does, and therefore it's permitted. Okay, now that we've finished that topic, we go back and Vitana Didan, our Mishnah, the, the first Mishnah, Masech Rosh Hashanah, how come it didn't also include the Machazita Shekel law, that Rosh Chodesh Nisan is the beginning? And the answer is, Kevante Katani Im Hevi Yasa, La Pesika Le, since Bidi Avad, if you get, if you brought the old from last year's Machazita Shekel, it's still valid. So therefore, it's not a definite rule. It's just saying it's a mitzvah. You should do it. But it's not an absolute cutoff point. So our Tana only wanted to uh, mention absolute cutoff points. Um, and that's why I didn't mention, even though it agrees that, yes, Machasita Shekel, the fiscal year, is in fact Nisan. Okay. Now, last item on this list of Nebraita is house rentals. How does that work? Right. No, not, not everyone agrees with this. It's only yes, Shomrim in the Braita. So this this uh, Brait, the next Braita is going to expand on it. It says, asar chodesh miyom liyom. If you say, I'm going to rent this uh, rent out my house to you for one year, that's a normal case. And that will be 12 months from day to day, from the right, from the first to the first or whatever. Okay, that's a normal case. If you'll say, if you say, I'll rent it out to you for this year. Well, then this year means this calendar year. And even if you're in the middle of the year, then it'll only be that half of the year that's left. Okay, it's, not, it's not for a year, but for the year. Um, good. So, and so for that purpose, Nisan, Rosh Chodesh Nisan is the cutoff. And if it's the middle of the year, that'll be the six months. If even if it's Rosh Chodesh Adar, and they say, I'll rent it out to you for this year, it means for the remainder of this year. And that ends Rosh Chodesh Nisan. So that rental will be only one month, even though it says the word year. Okay, that's the Yashomrim. And and according to that, and even according to those who say that even one year can be considered a full year regarding other laws, in this case, no one ever rents out a home for less than a year. 30 days is the minimum. Um, this is like on Airbnb, sometimes they tell you the minimum 30 days. So therefore, that's why it said, Rosh Chodesh Adar, that would be the, 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 the shortest amount of time that you would apply this law to. Okay, good. So that's what it means, the, that in the Rosh Chodesh Nisan is the middle of the year. So now we ask, Wait, how do you know? Maybe, uh, what's the source? What's, what's the source of this opinion? Maybe we should count it from Tishrei. If you say this year means from Tishrei to Tishrei. Um, uh, now, usually when people are renting a home, why do they want to rent a home? Because they need protection from the rain. So they need it during the rainy season. Once the sun comes in the springtime, the rainy season is, is, is ended. And so they don't need a home anymore. Maybe they just want to go and camp out and travel over the summer. So therefore, the most important time for having a rental is until Nisan. So that just makes more sense. Okay. Now, since this was just a yes, Shomrim in the Braita, that means everyone else disagrees. Also, our Mishnah, Mishnah, uh, Mishnah Rosh Hashanah does not include this at all uh, in, in its list of what happens in Nisan. So how come it's not in the Braita and it's not in the Mishnah? It's because they disagree with this law. And they would say, Sometimes there are literally knots. Nats also means clouds. The, uh, sometimes, in, even in Nisan, there are clouds in the sky and it could rain. So people still want to have shelter, even during Nisan and, and, uh, and going forward. So, therefore, we cannot assume that is the cutoff date is Nisan. It could be Tishrei. And so they don't agree with this law altogether. So that's interesting that even though here we saw in these, the first three, our Mishnah, uh, our Tana agrees but didn't mention them for other reasons. And the last one, this is the controversial one. It's only a Yashamrim, and the author of Amishnah would not agree with it. All right, and that concludes part B, which is, which was the uh, this Baraita. And now we're going to go all the way back to Amishnah 
And uh, all this, we finished Nisan. That's why we brought all of this together. So seven pages for these uh, two categories, Melachim and Regalim. Um, and now we're going to go to the next one, which is the first of Elul, is Rosh Hashanah for Maasar Behema, any animals that were born before Elul. I have to give a tenth of them from all that, that whatever was born before Elul, and I can't use uh, something I was born after Elul as a tenth for something that came before Elul. That's the cutoff date, according to the anonymous opinion, Rabbi Elazar and Rabbi Shimon, both of them say, no, it's the first of Tishre. Okay, so we're going to discuss this line now. Be'chad be'elul, Rosh Hashanah le'masar be'hema. Maneh, who is the author that says, who is, whose opinion is this? That we go with Elul is the, is, the, uh, is the cutoff date. Most animals are born before Elul, so that would be his reason. So maneh, Rabbi Meir, he, detanya, Rabbi Meir, Omer, be'chad be'elul, Rosh Hashanah le'masar be'hema. Rabbi Meir, in fact, says this, that is Rosh Chodesh Elul. Okay, good. So now that we know that, look at the different authorships that are hidden in the, in the Mishnah. We said the festivals, which means don't delay in, in bringing it. That line, that word has to be the Bishimon, because he's the one that says it has to be in order. And therefore, you have to know which is the first Pesach. So when you have a Pesach and then three, two more holidays after that, that's when you violate um, so that word Regalim is follows Rabbi Shimon. This second phrase uh, Elul that follows Rabbi Meir, and then this last phrase explicitly mentions Rabbi Shimon. Says it's Tishrei. So now we're wondering about the structure here. Uh, so what kind of structure do you first quote Rabbi Shimon then you interrupt and quote Rabbi Meir and then you go back to Rabbi Shimon why don't you put things in a better order so to, put, to put the same opinions uh, together uh, so that's the question the truth is that the B is the author the Danasi is the author of everything in the Mishnah and the B, he has a right to decide. He agrees with one Tana in one case and one Tana in another case. And so therefore he takes the Mishnah uh, and follows whichever opinion he agrees with. So that explains the structure. He can quote first to be Shimon and then to be Meir. And then he says explicitly, oh, by the way, to be Shimon disagrees with this, uh, with, with the second case. Uh, that be my, that I implied to be meir. Okay, fine. Now ihachi arba'a. Now we get raise a difficulty because if in fact you say that all these dates are are applicable and and the be agreed with them, then actually you have more than four Rashi Ashana. You're going to have five Hamishahavu. Where do you see five? Um, well, here uh, you have the the first of Nisan, right? So the first of Nisan is going to be for kings. That's one. Regalim is following the Bishimon. Regalim means Pesach, right? That's the, if you delay uh, bringing your korban, um, starting, from, starting from Pesach and then, you know, going around the, the next three holidays. So actually that uh, beginning time happens on the 15th of Nisan, not on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. So now we have the 1st of Nisan and the 15th of Nisan. And you have three more, right? Rosh Chodesh, um, Elul, Tishrei, and Shevat. So really, you have five different heads of the year. So this seems to be a problem. How can you, have, how can you say four when you actually have five? Okay, this is going to be the question that will uh, bring us to the, uh, the, the rest of the, of the daf. We're going to have four different answers to this. Rava is going to say, well, four of them are agreed upon by all. Rav Nachman is going to say, we're talking about four months, even if within one month you have multiple dates. The papa is going to be say, say that we only count something that begins at night, not if it can start during the day. And Rav Shet is going to say we only count things that depend on doing a deed and not other things. Okay, let's see how this works. Amarava, arbali divreha kol, Right, if you follow, it's four, everyone agrees that there are four 
they just disagree on which ones they are. According to the Bimeir, he doesn't agree with the Regalim one because he doesn't agree with the Bishimon. The Bimeir member said just the first, only one holiday, and that you have to bring it. So if you take away that one, you take away the 15th of Nisan, and the Bishimon, he doesn't have the Rosh Chodesh Elul from Asad Bema because he thinks it's in Tishrei. And so therefore, even though you're right, according to the Biuda and Hasi, there would be five, but he said four because according to all Tanaim, they all agree that there are in fact four. Um, okay, so that's answer number one. Second answer, Rav Nachman Chodashim, Ubahen Shanim. There are four months that are heads of the year, even though within one of the months, you can, uh, you can have multiple dates, like, the, like Nisan, the first and the 15th. Okay, good. But challenge to that. Meti Shisha besivan Rosh Hashanah lishtei halechem. Rabbi Breitah that says the 16th of Nisan, that's when we start counting the Omer, that's when we bring the, uh, when we bring Korban HaOmer, and from that date on is when you can start consuming the new um, grain. So that is a Rosh Hashanah also. And, well, that's okay, because that's in Nisan. But then in 6th of Sivan on Shavuot, we bring the two loaves, and the two loaves is also a new year because you cannot bring any mincha offering from the new grain until you until you bring shtehalechem, and that's another month. So now you're gonna have to add yet another month. So what about what are you gonna do about that? Litava um, litne shisha. That's a challenge to Rava because according to him you should count six different uh, beginnings. Rav Nachman by Yitzchak litne chamisha. According to Rav Nachman, you still have to. You can have only five because the first one's in Nisan. So now you have three dates in Nisan: the first, the fifteenth, and the sixteenth. But nevertheless, according to both of them, there are more uh, heads of the year that you did not account for. So though we need another answer. So third answer, we're only counting things that start in the evening. And these items here are korbanot that you can only bring during the day. You bring it sometime in the middle of the day, and that's when you can start eating from the new grain. So that's why we're not counting them. We're not counting those. Now, question to that, which meant that if I have an animal that I promised, I have to bring it by, um, by Pesach. Now, when on Pesach can I bring the animal? During the day. I can't bring a korban at night. And so then you should not count the regalim either, Rav Papa. And our answer is, no, in that case, you can count it. Since I vowed to donate this item many days before Pesach, so really, I, sh- I could have and should have given it any time before. Therefore, as soon as Pesach starts, even at night, I already violate the prohibition of not delaying. And even though I actually can't give it at night, I should have thought about that beforehand. Okay, so that answers the Fardaf Papa. But still, another question to the Papa, uh, Yovel, which is mentioned in the, in the Mishnah, right? Mishnah mentioned Yovel, Yovlot, right? Right here in Tishrei. So Yovel, when does Yovel start? Only on Yom Kippur, when you blow the shofar. And so why would you then include that? It doesn't start at night. It starts in the middle, in the day when he does that. No, we don't follow that opinion. We're following Bishmael, who says that Yovel actually starts on Rosh Hashanah. I mean, you're still going to blow the shofar on, on, on Yom Kippur, but the halacha of Yovel starts on Rosh Hashanah. So that's why he included it. Good. Rav Shesha Bered Rav Idi Amar. And the last response, last answer to how we count four is, Ki ka hashiv midi de la tale bema'ase. We're only counting something that happens automatically, not something that you have to do in action. So therefore, bringing the Omed or bringing Shetei Alechem that, that kicks in a new era that you can start eating the new grain, but that requires an action. Everything else is just when the time comes. So we're only counting things that when the time comes by itself. Something that depends on an action, we're not counting in this list. Uh, in the Mishnah. Hold on. The regalim, if, when, when's the first time, right, we're going, going back to what we just said, that if I donate an animal, uh, so I have to give it by the holiday, by Pesach. 
uh, by Sukkot, whatever, um, Pesach. So that's when it starts, um, the, the, the clock starts. Um, so when can I first bring it? Only during the day. And not only during the day, only after Korban Tamid. Korban Tamid, Shachar, is the first animal that has to be brought. So I can't bring my vow until after that. So you see that my obligation to bring the, the Korban and not delay is dependent on an action of bringing the Korban Tamid. And so we answer, No, no. Uh, really, the, 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 the obligation to not delay, the prohibition of not delay happens by itself, even before. You were supposed to bring it before. You, you donated this before. So even though it's true, the first time you can physically bring it, halachically bring it is after Koban Tamid, but your obligation doesn't depend on that. The obligation happened even before. Okay, question, Vare Yovelot. Yovelot, doesn't that depend on an action? When I blow shofar, that's when we can uh, we can go ahead and, and do it. Rabbi Ishmael ben Osher Rabbi Yochanan ben Beroka he. No, we'll follow Rabbi Yochanan ben Ishmael ben Osher Rabbi Yochanan ben Beroka because he says that actually uh, the jubilee year starts in, uh, in in on Tishrei and you don't actually actually have to wait till um, till you blow the shofar. And so that ends Rav Sheshat's uh, answer and. Um, actually, we have one more answer. There's five answers. I, I, I missed it on the outline. But of Ashe Amad, Arbad Ashe Shanim Hem, Shehen, Be Arbad Ashe Hodashim. So he says, no, a different answer. There are four new years that are on the four new moons. And it was on Rosh Chodesh at the beginning of the month. Um, so that's why it lists only these. We're not counting the Omer that's on the 16th or the Shtalechem that's on the, that's on the uh, 6th. And we're not counting Yovel blowing shofar that's on the 10th on Yom Kippur. We're only counting in our Mishnah new years that happen on the first of the month. Okay, good. So does that work? Well, Be'echad Bishvat, Kebet Shamai, right? The Tu Bishvat, Bet Hillel says Tu Bishvat is in the middle of the month, Tu, 15th. So are you following Bet Shamai who says it's on the first of Shivat? Hachi Kama, Shiloshad Lidivrakol, Be'echad Bishvat, Machlok, Bet Shamai, or Bet Hillel. No, what I mean to say is that three of them are agreed by, by everyone, and but the first of the of Shivat, that only Bet Shammai says, and um, that's and Bet Hillel disagrees. So the structure of our Mishnah, according to Rabashe, is that there are four heads of the year that are also on Rosh Chodesh. And however, the last one regarding Shavat, uh, regarding Shavat, that's only for Bet Shammai, but Bet Hillel would, in fact, disagree. And so now we actually have five different uh, explanations for why the Mishnah lists four different heads of the year. Baruch Adonai Amen ve'amen.